Roberts. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. As a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, it is incumbent on me to bring to this chamber information. Excuse me, Mr Acting Deputy President. I have on this run sheet that I have 15 minutes allocated and the clock only says 10. Um, Senator Roberts, I've just been advised that uh, the speakers list hasn't been distributed and so it's impossible for the clerks to um, set the clock in accordance with, this, with the list that hasn't been circulated to them. But we will set it for 15 minutes and it would help everyone if, we could, uh, if the clerks could receive the speakers list. Thank you. As a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, it is incumbent on me to bring to this chamber information about the persecution through prosecution of Christian groups in South East Queensland. When this motion was sent forth today, I am sure my colleagues wondered how, in 2017, Australian Christians could possibly be persecuted. The persecution and prosecution is real. It is hurtful to freedom of religion, and it is serious. This is Lent, and in this time many Christians reflect on the sacrifices the Lord God and his only son, Jesus Christ, made in the lead up to his prosecution and crucifixion under Pontius Pilate. It is a time for reflection and to recall the seriousness we can make in our lives, the sacrifices, sorry, we can make in our lives to become aware of our spirituality and the suffering of others around us. The suffering and sacrifice of South East Queensland's Christian community is profound. Recently, I have met with Reverend Josh Williamson and Ryan Hemlar. These people are missionaries. They provide Christian outreach throughout South East Queensland. They evangelise within the guidelines and proper processes prescribed by Queensland's Peaceful Assemblies Act. They feed the poor, comfort the dispossessed and shelter those in need with God's love and care. It will shock our country to know, to learn, that these innocent decent people are targeted by Queensland state governments of various political colours who aim to stop them from peaceful assembly and then chase them out of town. They are persecuted, that is correct, prosecuted for religious assembly. I will explain shortly how. At no other point has our nation's Christian community been under such grotesque attack, vicious, targeted attack. The Turnbull government's statement on so-called multiculturalism, as outlined on the front page of today's Australian, still tried to band-aid over, over the reality that multiculturalism is a failed ideology that strikes at the heart of our proud national heritage. His statement must go further and acknowledge our nation's Christian heritage, a heritage embodied on our beautiful flag. It is now incumbent on this chamber to rally against those that would vilify our Christian community. This is Australia. It is not Pakistan, Indonesia, South, South Saudi Arabia or some other despotic Islamic dictatorship. We must intervene in any way we can if we are to protect Christian dignity, protect the dignity of Australian government, in, of government institutions, protect the freedom of religion and protect Australians from conducting the most basic of services to this community. This prosecution story was recently told in the Courier Mail on the 9th of February 2017, where it was revealed how intense there is the harassment of the street preachers. I am blessed enough to have a street preacher on my team here in Parliament House. He and his family have often worked long days in other jobs and then go forth at night to provide service and healing to the community until late at night. Street preachers, I am told, are hunted down and persecuted everywhere in Australia. One would think this is Saudi Arabia. However, it is South East Queensland that I will pay particular attention to. Street preachers, from what I have seen, assemble in spots like Brisbane's Queen Street Mall. Maybe five to ten preachers. Sometimes they are Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons. Other times they are a range of other denominations. They set up a little table, place the Holy Scripture on it and talk to people who come by. Sometimes they may give a little talk using a microphone. They talk about Jesus just in the same way we use the words of Jesus when we open with this prayer in this chamber every day. On occasions, they may provide literature about the healing, forgiveness and love of Christianity, on how to obtain help if you are in need of support. I also see the work of Charlie Lynn, New South Wales State MP, in pushing back against control-oriented leftists, removing the word mateship in reference to the Kokoda Trek as similar to, work to the work of protecting Christians, to deny our national heritage in acknowledgement of important historical events, such as the Kokoda Trek, 
is no different to prosecuting Christians and campaigning to remove Christian symbols from our flag. This debate would start to turn the tide against multicultural Marxism if we are, if we are to pull together. The persecution of street preachers takes many forms. Each street preacher, in the information I will provide, has applied for a permit under Queensland's Peaceful Assembly Act. They gather under the protection of the law and may not be, by Act of Parliament, moved on or harassed on the, in the performance of that assembly. Just like unions can't be harassed if they gather, or just like Muslims can't, and are certainly not harassed if they decided to take, the street, to, take to the street of Lakemba, Holland Park or Kurrabi during Friday prayers. Heaven forbid a unionist or a Muslim in this country ever be brought to heel within the bounds of the law. Local governments, both Labor and Liberal oriented, and the Queensland State Police have harassed Christian preachers by issuing fines, illegal move-on notices and charges such as disobeying police orders and intimidation of a police officer. In Queensland, an umbrella Christian organisation called Operation 513 provides the logistical support for about 21 different denominations in the application of permits for street preaching. One of the preachers is Ryan Hemmelar, who is a most unassuming gentleman, polite, amenable and kind. He has been fined by Brisbane City Council for such things as handing out written material, using an amplifier and placing an A-frame sign with a Bible verse on it. He has been fined for alleged obstruction or unreasonably distributing, disturbing any person lawfully using a mall for simply having a friendly conversation with someone on a seat, interrupt, disturb or frustrate other mall users for simply having a friendly conversation with someone on a seat, Stock, stocking or storing goods in a mall, setting up a free Bible stand table. What a charge sheet, Mr Acting Deputy President. His fines have gone into thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, for speak, speaking up. Mr Luke Lane is the first of Brisbane City Council's officers who have started the process of targeting these Christian groups, including Mr Hemmler. Mr Lane is on tape stating he wanted to close these people down, as if authorising of state religion was his sole purview. Closing down Christianity is the real aim it is part of the cultural Marxist march. It is my view that Brisbane City Council and its officers have been loose with the truth when they have claimed in the Courier Mail that the street preachers harass people walking by. What a load of lies to say they hurl abuse. Anyone who conducts street preaching knows that if you want to ensure Christ's message gets through, you can't go hard at people. We have to emulate the grace, dignity and respect of Christ himself. I'm told, in most instances, these fines were issued after Brisbane City Council officers stood over while Mr Hamiller had a conversation with someone on a bench. A conversation on a bench. After the chat, Mr Hamiller gave a card with a Christian message to the person, and then the officer went up to the person, asked if he had given him anything, and then took the card off him and issued a fine. Let that sink in for a minute. A street preacher is fined for doing something you or I could do. Apply for a peaceful assembly permit, gather with friends, listen to the community and hear their concerns. Give them a loving message about the word of Christ or perhaps political literature that doesn't suit with the leftist view of the world. Brisbane City Council spends ratepayers' money on not only fining these people but challenging the fines in court. The Christian values of these people are targeted by the Liberal National Party Brisbane City Council. The Lord Mayor of Brisbane must urgently rescind these fines and allow these God-loving Christians to continue their outreach. If he does not, I can confirm here and now, One Nation will do everything possible to let the good people of Brisbane know this shameful behaviour at the next local government election. One Nation's march will go right to the centre of Brisbane, without fear or favour. My thoughts and concerns are also with the Reverend Josh Williamson. I noticed, Mr Acting Deputy President, no one in the room jumped when I said the Reverend Josh Williamson. Reverend. Can you imagine, can you believe that Reverend Williamson was charged on the orders of the Palaszczuk government's Gestapo-like tactics for disobeying a police order and intimidating a police order? 
In being cross-examined by prosecution, the barrister argued, using the title Reverend when giving his name to the police was intimidation. Contemplate this. Government resources are being used to prosecute street preachers for intimidating police officers with the word reverend. This is a direct and astonishing assault on Christianity. Our world has gone mad. People wonder, with things like this happening, why one nation is on the rise. Has the Queensland Premier prosecuted anyone for the use of the word imam? Perhaps rabbi offends the extreme left who are now running Queensland. The left, peppered with hateful anti-Semites, will soon use this success in Queensland to turn on the Jewish community. I have no doubt. Does the word father offend the Premier as well? Heaven forbid. People, are people free to practice their religion in South East Queensland under the Peaceful Assemblies Act? The street preachers are always supportive of the police. One Nation are always supportive of the police. We do not believe that this is a police agenda. I am told two parties are pushing the police. The first protagonist is the former Deputy Mayor of Logan, Councillor Russell Lutton, who police have told the preachers was behind pushing the police of Logan to target the street preachers. What an astonishing revelation. You would think a councillor who represented Woodridge, the most socially disadvantaged community in our country, would be more focused on calling the police about break-ins, drug dealings and bashings in his community. Perhaps Councillor Lutton spends a bit too much time down at the TAB watching the dogs, so my message is clear. One Nation rejects your targeting of street preachers and not the violent criminals who seek to protect. Councillor Lutton, you are not a proper and fit person to hold office. Resign. <laughs> it is the case that the Queensland Government could have cut these prosecutions off. The Queensland Government are the second protagonist. They could have protected the street preachers. They prefer not. I mean, the Palaszczuk Government, a far scarier word than reverend, could have brought on legislation to specifically protect street preachers as defined meaning of peaceful assembly, not that it should have been needed. It's my view that the Palaszczuk government has contempt for the Christian community and for the poor that community feeds. The Palaszczuk government's hate is palpable. It is the same hate exhibited by Logan and Brisbane city councils. Shame on these people, shame on their governments. Today, I extend Senator a Roberts, could you just resume your seat for a, for a moment? I just refer you to Standing Order 193.3. A senator shall not use offensive words against either House of Parliament or a House of a State or Territory Parliament or a member of such House or against the judicial officer and all imputation of improper motives and all personal uh, reflections on those houses, members or officers shall be considered highly disorderly. So please reflect on your contributions to respect to members of the Queensland Parliament. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Today I extend a hand of friendship to the other street preachers that have been persecuted. Blake Cannon, Blessing Adugbison, Macklin Hughes, John Strotschek, George Yusuf, Alan Cameron, David Sansbury, Matthew Anderson, Rebecca Hemmler, Michael Brimson, Desmond Nunns and Leanne Nissen, we stand with you. One Nation will fight for you. We know, Mr Acting Deputy President, that people have been slapped with thousands of dollars of fines. People have been intimidated, humiliated, harassed, targeted and worse, persecuted. Yet vicious sects with violent views and threats left unpunished for far worse crimes. I am told by the preachers they have spent over $15,000 in defending charges and fines. Costs have been awarded against the government in some preliminary cases, but the costs awarded do not cover all of the legal fees. The prosecution must stop. Imagine if these people were free to spend that money on its original intent, feeding and clothing the poor of South East Queensland. The poor that have been abandoned by the Palaszczuk government. 
Let's imagine this. Under the Palaszczuk government, these preachers were actually violent union bosses. Perhaps they could have been heavy-handed thugs, violent criminals, roaming work sites, handing out union membership forms to workers in public. Perhaps on Labor Day, would the jackboots be sent in then to stop the unionists by the Premier? No. Would one of the Premier's prosecutors ask a, a union sitting in the dock, is union using your union ticket or title an intimidation of police officers? No. And I'll tell, what, tell you what Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk's minority Queensland government would do. As reported recently in The Australian, she has used the final parliamentary sitting week of last year to reverse a crackdown on unions, including lifting a requirement for union bosses to publish credit card statements. Premier Palaszczuk has just given thieving union bosses the right to do as they wish with workers' fees. She has just encouraged the likes of Craig Thompson while prosecuting street preachers. If you are a corrupt, violent union boss, Palaszczuk wants to let you free. If you are a violent criminal, Logan, fear not, Councillor Lutton is too busy betting on the dog to chase you down. But if you are a street preacher in Queensland, you can't even tell a police officer you are a reverend. The prosecution of street preachers in South East Queensland must stop. Senator Dastyari.